How's everyone? Good. Good afternoon. I want to take this opportunity to speak to both our officers who serve the Atlanta Police Department and the community that we serve. A week ago, I was the interim chief of Atlanta Department of Corrections. As you know, I was suddenly and unexpectedly asked to be your interim chief of police, doing what is obviously a most tumultuous time in our department. I see the challenges very clearly before me. Trust me when I tell you your voices are being heard loud and clear. I see that my focus is on your path forward and work is already underway. Change will not happen overnight, but together we will make it to the other side of where we are now. What must be addressed is the availability of police in this city and the ability to respond to 911 calls. It is factual that over the past few days, we've seen higher than average number of officers call in sick, which caused us to shift resources to ensure proper coverage. The explanation for calling out sick vary and include officers questioning their training, officers being challenged and attacked, and unease about officers seeing their colleagues criminally charged so quickly. Neither APD leadership nor the administration are dismissive of these notions. I want each of you to know that we are in this together and we support you. What is immediately evident is that officers via ordinary undue process steps and usual investigation of complaints against them have been abandoned. And some are questioning how to execute what has been taught to them. What is also clear is that the public, as well as the police officers, need to gain an understanding about these matters to properly move forward together. Atlanta police officers are some of the best trained officers in this country. Like any organization, we have room for improvement and we welcome input in that respect. But there has to be an understanding regarding process, SOPs, and training. My proposal is to stand up teams within our Office of Professional Standards that are dedicated to swift, fair, and thorough investigations of certain complex, compl complex complaints. We simply cannot have investigations drag endlessly while officers are in limbo and members of the community await answers. Additionally, we'll begin reviewing our training programs for improvement, expanding in areas of de-escalation, implicit bias, and peer intervention. It is important to understand that our training and our disciplinary process are in a place for the protection of our officers and the citizens we serve. They must both be adhered to for clarity and understanding. Make no mistake, I will defend our disciplinary process and I am committed to fair and thorough investigation and upholding due process. As for the primary objective, the city, fair the safety of this city, that of, I'm sorry, the safety of our city, that our brothers and sisters on this force, though some officers are in a space of concern and choose to seek out due to the fear of protest, Many officers continue to answer the call. Over the past few days, we've stretched our resources to address demonstrators simultaneously responding to 911 calls. This volume of activity can be taxing on any department. We are the largest police department in the state and have the resources to ensure safety to our citizens. If you call 911, a police officer will respond. The Atlanta Police Department has not given up on the citizens that we, the city that we love, and we ask that you not give up on us. We've made tremendous strides in Atlanta. We are not a perfect department and are always working towards improvement, but we are not a department known for fragrant abuse, hate, or injustice. We encourage due process for those we encounter as well as ourselves. We are all upset by the recent events, and we are also concerned for our fellow officers. 
I implore you to channel the concerns for the fellow officers by having their back. At this moment, I implore you to remember why you became a police officer. Why we did not choose this line of work because it was easy. We became officers, officers because we wanted to help people in distress. Make a difference in our communities and simply serve and protect. We've not given up on this city, nor will we, not, nor will we tolerate lawlessness and injustice. And I want it to be clear, we will not tolerate lawlessness and injustice in this city. We recognize room for improvement, and we will work quickly to get there. To my APD family, I hear for you. I'm here for you. I believe in you. You have my support. I want you to know that you also have the mayor's support, and remain, she remains committed to our safety and success of the department and the city. As the mayor examined ways to help build upon the success of our department, our officers have a chance to speak direct, will have the chance to speak directly to her in the coming days. And now I'll take any questions. Chief, you obviously have a police department where members are hurting right now. Um, also, they are somewhat being disrespected out on the street sometimes. It'd be great to hear from you in terms of what you want these officers to know about how you have their back right now, especially with so many calling out. How will you support them moving forward since they've been working so long and hard? So that is, uh, that's a great question, Ryan. Listen, we've been, we have been working for a number of days, long hours, addressing, making sure that this city remains safe. And I've been going to every, I've been going to many of the roll calls, but I've had the, the executive staff, the chiefs and the majors, make sure that they go out to these roll calls as well. So they can hear directly from the officers and, and bring those concerns back to me so that we can come up with a strategy to, to better address it. So one of the things we had to incorporate over the past up couple of days is to make sure that these officers can get some rest, because it is exhausting. I've looked at our disciplinary process. I've had conversations with the mayor to ensure that we uh, can make, have a different look and spend on how we are addressing these issues. One concern I hear over and over, they believe that the police department has been turned into a political situation, it's political football. How can you let officers know that you're gonna be standing between them and the politics? Well, see, I'm, I'm not getting into politics. That's not my position. I'm not, I'm not here for politics. I'm here to lead this police department and, and, and from where we are right now. Uh, I, I can't bother with what the politics is going on. We, we got a lot of issues in the city of Atlanta right now as it relates to these demonstrations, and, and that's what I'm here to do. How, how many yeah. absentee sir, have you had, uh, and, and how many officers have resigned? So we've had, uh, since, since June, the number is nine, um, what, and that's the number from our HR. What may be in the pipeline, I couldn't tell you because we don't have those numbers. Uh, as it relates to how many officers have sicked out, that number continue to fluctuate from day to day. Again, it is above average. We clearly see the significance in what's happening. But those numbers are uh, continuing to be calculated so I can have a, a final number and, and report it back to you all. But you don't have that number right now? I don't have an actual number. It's just not appropriate for me to give you an actual number uh, at this time. There was an incident last night at the Wendy's where the protest was going on shooting, one was shot. Are there any discussions being had about clearing out the protests there, clearing out the site? Listen, we are sensitive to, to protests, and we recognize that the community is hurting. But I don't want anyone to be misunderstood that our sensitive, sensitivity will allow lawlessness to happen in this city. We understand that. So we are addressing those issues as, it, as they arrive. Around 2 p.m. earlier this afternoon, you had a report of um, a couple who were stopped by the Wendy's, by the protesters, and weren't allowed to pass because they were white, and then attacked. You, can you update any information on that? So we, I've heard that information as well. I'm not familiar with the actual steps that we have taken thus far uh, because it's so, it's so quickly. Uh, I'm just getting that information myself, but I'll be glad to follow up and, and see exactly where we are. But I, do, I, have, I know that we are addressing it. And what about the shooting last night at Thompson Boulevard? Absolutely. I'm familiar with that one as well, and we're investigating that as well. Again, I don't want people to mis be misunderstood. We are sensitive to the community's need. We recognize that they are hurting. 
and we're sensitive to that, but we will not tolerate lawlessness. Did the GBI, I believe, mentioned that they were not aware that charges were coming for, for the officer involved in the Wendy situation. Did, did the APD, were you aware that charges were coming from the Fulton Department? So what happened is uh, I got a call right before the press conference itself saying that charges were being brought. Uh, so no, I'm, I was so, I was as shocked uh, in, in our administrative process unless we uh, recognize immediately that there's something uh, before we call it, that's what we call the GBI in, to investigate this and we follow their lead. Uh, so I, I, I was surprised that the DA would get to that conclusion that fast. How would you say the relationship with the Fulton County DA's office and the APD is doing right now? Um, I mean, we have to work, we're two organizations, two pieces of government that have to work together. Good, bad, you have to work together. We have to work together. All right. Chief, it's clear that the city's hurting and that the officers are hurting as well. We've been here for quite some time. Reflect on where we are right now. You've been here for a while. Can you compare it to anything or is this one of the worst Situation. This is probably one, of, I've been here a while, you're absolutely right. This is my 31st and now that I'm back, I, it appears that I'm working on my 32nd year. Uh, and yes, this is a very challenging time. But one of the things that I was able to do was go out and talk to the officers myself uh, and some of these very officers be behind me to get their input on what was happening, what they were feeling. And as I stated in my speech earlier, a number of them are, have concerns about what's going on. This is a unique space. We've not seen incidences where uh, cases about, have been brought against our police officers and have been brought so rapidly. We have a number of them that he's not moved on, the DA has not moved on that quickly. But there are officers sitting at home right now who you might be able to talk to. What do you want them to know about maybe coming back? One of the things I would, con I, I can't address the issue issues that have happened. What I can tell you is if we have to have faith in our due process. And if you have faith in your due process and believe that you have done everything appropriately, due process will play out. Uh, two questions related to the Wendy's. Uh, one, the shooting last night. Uh, do you have any knowledge of how that transpired and do you have a suspect or a suspect description of who the shooter might have been? I, I, don't, I don't have that information right now. Okay. And then the second follow-up question about, related to the arson at the, uh, the Wendy's. Um, there was a warrant sworn out for a woman by the name of Natalie White. Do we? Mr. Brooks mentioned a woman by the name of Natalie White when he was stopped by the officers on Friday, the previous Friday. Do we know if this is one and the same person? That, uh, the, I'm sorry, Atlanta Fire and Rescue is taking a lead on that case. During the protests over the last few weeks, APD Chief <laughs> Shields you know, was seen out and about uh, quite often, and, and there were some viral videos that took over of her speaking with protesters. Does that feel like a philosophy that you're going to be carrying on? Do you feel like it, it ultimately failed? What, how do you feel like the relation, the personal on the street relationship is between both leadership, officers, and protesters? Well, you know, uh, Chief Shield is a wonderful chief. Uh, I, she and I worked together uh, for a number of years on this police department. And she have her style and I have mine. I am clearly also a person that doesn't have a problem getting out in the community and talking to the community. Uh, I think that as a zone commander, that was one of my strengths, continuing to meet with the community where they were. Uh, and then as well, meeting with these officers where they were. So I, I think that the strategy of getting out and actually hearing the, the concerns of the people and them being able to hear my voice directly is a good strategy. Last question, guys. There must have been a reason Mayor Bobby picked you to, to lead the department at this point. Uh, is there any kind of reason in particular you think you were chosen? Um, you would really have to ask, ask the mayor. I, I, would, I would imagine that uh, she had seen me work uh, from being a major in the zone all the way up to being the assistant chief of the police department. And I was already serving as the, the interim uh, of the jail, and she felt the need for me to come in and, and assist here as well. But that, that's a question better asked for the mayor. Thank you, everyone. Um, please wait to be escorted out of the building by the public affairs personnel in the back. Thank you.